The first German successful ejection was in a jet Heinkel 280 uh, in January 1942 and uh, totally successful. We were up against a really technologically very advanced enemy. In fact, more technologically advanced than we were. They were way ahead of us with ejection seats. Um, they didn't use cordite like Martin Baker eventually did. They used compressed air. And um, the one thing I think that was showed their forward thinking was they reckoned that if air crew had to use the ejection seat, they were in deep trouble and probably were out of control. And if they were out of control, the chances were they were being subjected to high G. Now, I found this in the DH-108. Uh, I got into a situation with a, a, a runaway oscillation and um, wanted to eject, but I was being subjected to 4G most of the time. And your arms are, are down here and you can't get them up to pull the blind. And um, there's nothing I could do. i just sit back and think of England. And um, But... In the German situation, they had thought of this and had at the pilot's uh, left thigh a trigger. And if you pushed that, out you went. Without face blind, of course, so you took a bit of a battering, but you got out. On the other hand, they had the disasters. Do um, you remember the Dornier 335, the one the engine in front and the engine behind? When I was testing those, um, we dug out the German test pilots from there and they told us a story that um, two had crashed and they'd found the test pilots with no arms. And uh, we were very puzzled by this. So we looked into it at Farnborough and um, because of this the sequence was, you had three buttons here, and you press one, that blew the rear prop off. Press two, that blew the fin and rudder off. The, um, so the mincing machines had gone. Uh, three, you armed it. But then you had to jettison the can canopy before you could pull the blind. And um, we, the canopy, if, say you're going that direction, yeah, had two things at each side of the academy, two levers. And you had to grip these and pull them back over top dead center, and then it would go. But they were very difficult to pull. And, um, you know, you really had to hold and pull that, and then suddenly, bang, away it went. And they reckon these guys were holding so tight, the way it went, arms went with it. And so we checked this out in the, in the uh, Wintels of Farnborough and it, it looked that way. It, it was a very fast airplane. The problem was the engines hadn't been developed and the, the real engine tended to overheat. It was a little dangerous. In fact, the casualties we had at Farnborough and the Americans had were real engines overheating. Um, but it um, was a damn fast airplane. Very nice to fly, too. But there we go. The night fighter that they s hoped would be up to the mozzie, and it was far from it, was the Heinkel 219. Mind you, it was a remarkable airplane because it was the first production aircraft with ejection seats for both crew. And it also had the thing that frightened the wits out of the bomber command. It had a thing called Schreger Musik, which were two 30 millimeter guns on top of the aircrew cabin, angled up at 60 degrees. And you just flew under the thing and let blast. On the first sortie a Heinkel 219 ever made, 
It killed six lakhs in one sortie. That's the sort of rebel it was. It also, in its career, operational career, had 12 ejections of both crew, pilot and red officer, all totally successful. But it didn't have the speed to match, even remotely match the Mozzie. 